China doesn't want to be called a copycat anymore, so they're swinging for the fences with what might be the wildest rocket recovery idea the world has ever seen. Catching, and I mean literally snagging, a falling multi-ton rocket with wires. Yep, not landing pads, not robotic arms, wires. While SpaceX is building Mechazilla, a towering mechanical beast designed to grab Starship out of the sky, China's taking inspiration from, well, its traditional circus act. Picture an acrobat flying through the air, except it's a huge rocket screaming back to Earth under engine thrust. The moment this concept dropped, it went viral. Not because it looked brilliant, but because people were so funny. But what if I told you it's not as insane as it sounds? In today's Tech Map episode, we're diving deep into China's new rocket recovery method, the science behind it, and why they're still chasing this idea despite all the critics. We'll also explore how it stacks up against SpaceX's Mechazilla, the real reason Musk dismissed the concept years ago, and whether this bold experiment could secretly be the key to the next leap in rocket reusability. China is dead set on challenging the United States in the modern space race, and their ambition is crystal clear. They want to overtake U.S. dominance in space by the year 2045. Now, to be fair, they've made some impressive progress already. Take the Tiangong space station. Not only is it operational, but Chinese astronauts there have already set a new record for the longest spacewalk. Then there's the Chang'e lunar missions, which have steadily racked up successes and proven that China means business when it comes to exploring the moon. But here's the thing, catching up is one thing. Surpassing the US, especially in cutting edge space technology, is a whole different game. China still lags behind in areas like low earth orbit broadband services and innovative launch systems, especially compared to companies like SpaceX that are rewriting the playbook. So what's China's game plan? Step one, copy what works, seriously. Several Chinese companies like iSpace and Cosmo Leap are heavily borrowing, or let's just say it, copying from SpaceX's designs. iSpace's Hyperbola 3, for instance, looks and acts like a Falcon 9 twin right down to its reusable architecture and sea-based recovery goals by 2025 or 2026. And it's not just orbital rockets. Deep Blue Aerospace is developing a capsule system for suborbital space tourism that's basically a look-alike of SpaceX's Dragon capsule. To be fair, copying can be an efficient first move. It speeds up research and development. But building a look-alike rocket is way easier than matching the performance, cost efficiency, and engineering brilliance of something like a Falcon 9. China still faces steep challenges, especially in mastering complex feats like reusable launches, pinpoint landings, and mass-scale manufacturing. In September 2024, Deep Blue's reusable Nebula 1 rocket exploded during a vertical landing test. And in January 2025, a Long March 3B rocket dropped a spent stage over a rural area in Guizhou province, instead of an ocean, sparking serious safety concerns. These missteps are pushing China to step up with more original ideas. It's not just about technology anymore. National pride is on the line. Nobody wants to be known as the copycat nation, especially not when you're trying to compete with your geopolitical rival. Which brings us to one of the wildest things we've seen recently, a viral animation on X showing a Chinese company, Space Transportation, testing a totally new kind of rocket recovery system using a net. Yes, a net. Their idea is to catch a falling rocket stage mid-air using a giant net system, one that looks suspiciously similar to SpaceX's Starship upper stage in design, using flaps and variable thrust engines to slow descent. But instead of landing the rocket, they plan to catch it. An upper net snags it while a lower net absorbs the impact and handles the heat from the engines. It's honestly like watching a high-stakes space circus act. Remember those aerial acrobats at the circus when you were a kid? Replace the acrobat with a multi-ton rocket and you've got the idea. 
The concept has gone viral, and reactions have been mixed. You'll see comments like, that isn't going to work, no net is surviving that, or what genius thinks this will work? Still, if it does work, it could be beneficial to what extent? No more need for expensive landing pads or giant robotic arms. For a country like China, which wants to expand launch operations to more regions, this could make things more flexible and cost-effective. Funny enough, SpaceX actually explored something like this years ago. Internally, they considered using a big net or inflatable cushion to catch Starship. Elon Musk even talked about it on X, but ultimately dismissed the idea. Why? He explained that the optimized landing propellant is only about 5% of the dry mass, so reducing the landing propellant by using a softer landing method is not a game changer for the overall system efficiency or reusability. Instead, Musk envisions a future where starships aren't landing themselves, but are caught in mid-air by towers, like something out of a sci-fi film. To put it simply, the net system just didn't save enough weight to justify the complexity. Now, on paper it might sound clever, but in reality, it's a massive engineering headache. First off, that net would have to survive some of the most extreme forces imaginable. Not just the sheer weight of the rocket, but also the scorching heat and downward thrust from its engines during descent. We're talking about forces that blew up Starship's orbital launch mount back in 2023. So yeah, a simple net probably isn't going to cut it. And precision? Oh boy, it's off the charts. Catching a falling rocket with a net is even trickier than SpaceX's own Mechazilla system. Think about it. Would you rather grab a multi-ton rocket using strong steel arms or try to snare it with wires over open sea? Which one would be safer? Let me know your answer in the comment section below. Anyway, if you loved this deep dive, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring the bell. We're aiming for 150,000 subscribers, and we need you to get there. Unlike Mechazilla's robotic arms that can move and adapt in real time, these net systems don't offer much wiggle room, no dynamic adjustment, no forgiveness if the rocket drifts slightly or rotates off axis. The rocket would have to descend perfectly with surgical smoothness and line up its hooks with precision just to get snagged by those wires. That's a lot of pressure on the guidance system. Now, let's talk money. The whole appeal of the net system was cutting down on infrastructure. But when you really break it down, it might not actually save that much. On the other hand, SpaceX's catch arms, while expensive to build, come with a ton of benefits. They don't just catch the booster. They can guide it, align it, and gently lower it right back onto the launch mount or prep platform. That means no need for extra drone ships or landing pads. Just catch, inspect, and prep for the next flight. Boom. Way faster turnaround. Plus, these arms aren't flying blind. They work with high-res cameras, LIDAR, and super-precise real-time tracking systems that follow Starship's descent to within millimeters. They synchronize with every flip, burn, and movement the rocket makes as it comes down. So while a net might look cool in a viral animation, in the real world of rocketry, precision, reliability, and adaptability still rule the game. All right, let's flip the script for a second. Instead of asking why the net-based rocket recovery system might fail, let's ask, why is China still chasing it, despite all its obvious limitations? Well, one possible reason is pretty straightforward, learning and development. Sometimes tackling a tough engineering problem, even one that seems impractical, can be an incredibly valuable learning experience. By experimenting with a net-based recovery system, China is diving deep into materials science, flight control systems, aerodynamics, and more. The data they gather from each test, each failure, and each near miss adds up. This kind of iterative trial and error approach is critical if you're serious about mastering rocket reusability in the long run. And here's something you might not know. China tends to embrace higher risk, high reward experimentation more readily than some of its Western counterparts. Their tech development model often involves a greater tolerance for failure, because even failed experiments move the needle forward. What might seem too risky for a U.S. startup 
could be exactly the kind of moonshot China is willing to take. So in that context, the net system isn't just a gimmick. It's a bold experiment that fits perfectly into their broader innovation strategy. Now, let's zoom in on the company behind this. Space transportation. Their focus isn't just rockets. They're also working on hypersonic and reusable space tech. So their net project could be about more than just catching rockets. It could be a way to attract government support, secure funding, or build their brand as cutting-edge innovators willing to try what others won't. And who says the net idea has to stay the same forever? There's also potential for adaptation. China may not stick to a pure net-based solution, but the tech and data from these tests could be used to build hybrid systems, something that blends net recovery with traditional landings. Imagine a system that uses wires for stabilization and a soft catch mechanism for the final stage. That's where real innovation often happens, when you mash up bold ideas and refine them into something practical. While the spotlight is often on Mechazilla catching rockets mid-air at Starbase, SpaceX isn't putting all its landing eggs in one basket. They've also perfected a different and equally brilliant method landing boosters on the open ocean using drone ships. This method, which has been in use since early 2015, involves something called an Autonomous Spaceport Drone Ship, or ASDS. Imagine a massive ocean barge modified with powerful propulsion systems that allow it to hold position with pinpoint accuracy, even in rough seas. It features a giant landing pad and a whole bunch of tech that talks directly to the returning Falcon 9 booster. And of course, being SpaceX, each of these drone ships comes with a sci-fi inspired name. Just read the instructions, of course I still love you, and a shortfall of gravitas. Now here's why drone ship landings are a game changer. First, it's all about flexibility. These platforms can be stationed just about anywhere in the ocean. That means the rocket doesn't need to carry a bunch of extra fuel just to fly back to a static land-based site. Instead, it follows the most efficient path home, straight down to a waiting drone ship. This makes the return trajectory smoother, faster, and way more fuel efficient. Second, and this is a big one, landing at sea reduces risk. If something goes wrong, whether it's a missed landing or an engine failure, you're not threatening nearby towns or infrastructure. You've got thousands of miles of ocean as a natural safety cushion. It's the safest way to test, fail, learn, and fly again. And SpaceX has nailed this method. Falcon 9 has clocked in nearly 500 successful landings, many of which have happened on these trusty ocean platforms. That track record speaks volumes about the reliability, safety, and precision of drone ship recoveries. So while Mechazilla might be the flashiest recovery system in the SpaceX playbook, don't underestimate the quiet workhorses floating out at sea. They've helped make rapid reusability not just a dream, but a daily reality.